Thank you for your interest in electrical engineering at the online campus here at Arizona State University. This is a prospective student information and a quick overview. Important, this recording is not a substitute for attending our prospective info session, which is facilitated by an academic advisor in electrical engineering by Zoom. Please email us at askee at asu.edu to be added to an upcoming Zoom session. The seminar allows for Q&A at the end and student specific feedback will be provided once attendance is recorded. Electrical engineering and a path to admittance. Why is it important to attend the prospective online student info session via Zoom Live? Well, it's to understand the admittance criteria and how it applies to your specific admission review. It's also to gain information on the nuances within the admission criteria and how it applies to your admission file. It's to make an informed decision as to whether earning your way into electrical engineering is a feasible option for you. And it's also to discuss options with an electrical engineering advisor and to gain feedback on how your current major or another major at ASU might apply to your career goals. Once you attend, you will get a follow-up email specifically applying to your scenario and then access to the advisor who facilitated the session if you have future, future questions. Very important, it is not advised to move forward in an electrical engineering path. And what we mean by that is taking electrical engineering classes unless you have attended our session and received our student-specific feedback. The reason being is because we are only going to recommend the courses that are necessary for you to gain admittance to the program. We don't want students taking courses that they may not be able to use in the future because if you change majors, even from the major you're in now to something other than electrical engineering, those courses may not apply to that new major. So keep that in mind. Admission criteria. GPA calculations and how are they calculated for admission? ASU admissions reviews all transferable completed and attempted classes. So this includes non-transferable grades of E, which some people call an F, and D to get a cumulative, what we call a transfer GPA. Once students begin taking classes at ASU, those ASU classes are also added into that cumulative score with all of the transferable credits to get what we call an ASU plus transfer GPA. And this is for admission to the major only. Once you're admitted to the major, your ASU GPA is what will show up on your transcript. Please note that transfer courses that do not have earned grades are not used in this calculation. An example might be military or JST hours. Primary admission criteria for students with 24 or more college credits, which means you have a transfer GPA of at least a 3.0, and then you are not missing any math or lab science competencies. And for math, that would be four years of high school math um, or one transferable three semester hour college math class for which at least intermediate algebra is a prerequisite. And then lab science competencies. We are looking for three varying high school lab sciences, and that's a full year of each of those specific labs, or three varying college level at four credits lab sciences to get those lab science competencies. Secondary admission criteria was created for transfer students specifically because most transfer students have gone among between several colleges and may not have a 3.0. So this is for transfer students with 24 or more credits. We're looking for an ASU plus transfer GPA of a minimum of 2.5. And then they must also have completed what we would consider critical courses for success in electrical engineering, which is calculus one, calculus two, and university physics with the lab. The critical course GPA for those courses must be 2.75 in total. So again, an ASU plus transfer cumulative GPA of 2.5, and then a critical class GPA of 2.75. What if I don't meet these criteria? Well, exceptions cannot be made to admission criteria. So please check with your advisor to see if you can explore other degree programs that might better fit your needs and your career interests. 
program information. So electrical engineering is a 120 hours minimum of coursework, and it is a very prescribed and prerequisite driven program. There's not a lot of free electives. Well, there are actually aren't any free electives. Only when you get to the upper division where you're taking what we call technical electives, are you allowed to choose those from a bucket that we prescribe to you. So it's five math courses, starting with calculus one, three calculus-based physics courses, general chemistry, specifically general chemistry two. Then we're looking at 100 and 200 level uh, electrical engineering specific coursework, three and 400 level electrical engineering coursework. And then of course, all students at ASU must complete the equivalent to English 101 or 102, which is English composition. And then of course, university general studies, which you may know of things like humanities and so forth. And that's for every student at ASU as well. The ASU online format is lower division coursework is completed, the one and 200, 200 level coursework in the seven and a half week long A and B sessions and all upper division three and 400 level coursework is in the 15 week traditional C session semester. So A and B overlap C um, for one semester. And then such summer sessions are a little bit different. A and B sessions are six weeks long and C sessions um, for summer are eight weeks long. And for this particular major, the only things you would be able to take in A and B for summer would be things like English composition, any general studies like humanities or social behavioral studies, things of that nature, and math. C session classes for this major would be offered um, for like your chemistry, your physics, and then anything electrical engineering related would be in those eight week sessions in summer. Strategies for success, time requirements. Um, this is a very challenging degree plan because there's a lot of application, studying for math, et cetera. So you need to typically devote 20 to 30 hours for one course um, that you're taking. So completing classes with a lab component may require additional time. So it might be a good idea to take one class at a time, specifically when you're earning your way into the major, so you can focus on getting the grades that you need to change your major. Your ability to devote, to devote adequate time to your studies is going to be the largest contributing factor to your success. Transfer credit evaluations. Credits can only be awarded for courses with a directly equivalent electrical engineering degree requirement. So keep that in mind. You may notice at the bottom of your degree audit that there are classes down there that are considered transferable, but they're not applying to anything specifically. That doesn't mean those courses won't be applicable to any of the degree plan requirements. For example, let's say you see your calculus one down at the bottom and it doesn't have anything, it's not associating with the requirement in the degree plan. That just means that your college was, that course from your college was never transferred to ASU previously and it was never evaluated. So this means you will then need to go to the transfer guide and submit that course for evaluation with a syllabus to see if you can gain equivalency. You can use my path to ASU as well on the transfer guide um, to compare your coursework to the degree requirements before you even apply to ASU. Um, and on the same website is where you'll find your um, course, the course review from colleges, and then there's a submit your submit your course for evaluation link. For those of you who have joint services transcripts, they are evaluated on an individual basis for directly equivalent coursework when you get into any specific major that you're, you're currently working on. So for example, when we have students that transition in, we say to our program chair, hey, this particular student has JST hours, can you look this over and let us know if you believe any of these are specific to EE. I can tell you for this major, we've been doing this for years now, um, that only about nine credits, which are three classes, are technically, um, based on job, depending on job function, applicable to this major. So keep that in mind. If you have a lot of joint services transcripts, you may want to look at a program that has a lot of open elective hours. So your next steps, think about whether electrical engineering is the right program for you and sign up for this prospective student information session via Zoom. It's just about an hour. Sometimes it's less depending on the Q&A session. 
I mean, that is your advising session and you will get that student specific feedback that you're looking for. And then of course, take the next steps recommended by the advisor. Once you attend the Zoom session, we do a lot of work for these. So please make sure you review your email when you get it, because um, it is a detailed and thorough overview of your specific file. And then you'll have access to that advisor for future questions if you want to reach out to them. We thank you for your interest in electrical engineering, and this is our general inbox if you have questions or if you want to get registered for that info session. We highly encourage it, and thank you so much, and have a great day.